You're right. He is the go-to guy for Tennessee. I mean, he, he's been the guy that's pitched in, like you said, Dave, every single type of game, big game, you know, no matter what it is, he's not going to be affected by the lineup. He's a guy with unbelievable stuff. You build it. I mean, look at it, 6'4", everything you want right there. So the stuff is there. It's going to be 92 to 96 with the fastball, a true four pitch, maybe even a five pitch because he started to mix in a cutter. And so when, when you have a guy like that with that kind of repertoire, that's who I would want to attack this lineup. Balls behind 2-0, oh, but gets a strike there to make it 2-1 and one on Corey Collins. I mean, just look at that strike thrower, 31 strikeouts, only four walks. The whip is unbelievable. So this is who you want out there. It's just a matter of, hey, can he go out there, put up some zeros, and then can they also score him some runs? Because that's been a big thing for him. Here's Collins, though. No hotter bat in the last week and a half than this young man. Last five games, hitting 650, eight home runs, and 19 runs batted in. Swings through the 3 1 fastball at 3 and 2. On the year, Collins at 442 with a dozen homers and 29 runs batted in. And a guy that really wasn't even inserted into the leadoff spot until about 10 days ago. What a great decision by Will Coggin, the hitting coach, and Wes Johnson, the head coach. That one is smoked right back up the middle, but glove there as the shift was on. So Ariel Antigua. Making a nice play, the shortstop behind the bag at second for out number one. Well, that's huge to get the leadoff guy out, especially in front of him. You know who's coming up, but man, the shift is played perfectly. Nice job by Collins. Man. That's all you can ask for. You just put, a, you know, you you put the good swing on it. The ball hits the barrel. You, you hit a line drive. It just happens to be right at the shift. So, out number one. Here is Charlie Condon. The best hitter in college baseball right now. National player of the year candidate, potential number one overall pick. Leads the nation in average slugging percentage, home runs, on base percentage. And rips this one into the gap in left field. He had a double last night for his only hit. Looks like he's going to turn this one into another double. He'll stand up at second base. And George has barreled a couple of pitches to start the first. Well, Dave, it's just an offense that they just keep hitting. And that's one of the things is last night, one through four hitters had six, seven hits, and they were all extra base hits. And another one right here, just, you know, a couple homers. Uh, four or five doubles, and now you got another double gets a guy in the scoring position. But I mean, he has shown that he can hit, doesn't matter what pitch, doesn't matter what pitcher. And when you have the guys like this hitting what is a potential first rounder in Drew Beam, and you showing that, hey, you can't overmatch me like that, it shows you he's going to be at the top of the draft. That ball is ripped the right to Antigua. They got Condon in a run down. They'll go to third. They get the out there. Kinda of, kind of got caught up in no man's land there. And made a break for third, and Antigua sharply through to third and got the out. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better, Dan. It's one of those where you're taught actually to the other side, and he it's really was right at him. And as Condon's trying to get out of the way, he catches his feet a little bit off balance, and Antigua, yeah, smart play by the shortstop, and that's why he's out there, makes that play. And that's a huge pickup for Tennessee and Drew Beam. Two down. And a runner at first for Slate Alford, or excuse me, for Dylan Goldstein, the designated hit, hitter. Alford stands over at first. What they've seen so far, the, you know, they've barreled some balls up. And so right there, I like the first pitch breaking ball. So, because they're going to jump on the fastball, sometimes you got to find that fastball location. And what better way to do it now is to get ahead with the breaking ball early. And you see now he goes fastball next pitch. And now he said no two. A lot of stuff to move. Goldstein last night, two for four. And an RBI. Lays off the 0-2 pitch. Georgia's had 22 home runs in their last five games. Now, eight of those 22, though, belong to their leadoff man, Corey Collins. Break.
breaking ball lifted down the line and left. That'll be caught in foul territory for the team lead with those 10 home runs. Swings through the first pitch behind 0 and 1. He is reported to hit in 22 of 26 games this year for the junior. Out of Brooklyn, New York. The man they call Simo. That one's off the plate. You know, Dave, he's got to have to move the fastball in and out, right? You you can't just sit in one spot against a good hitting team. So you, you have to see early on, is he, you know, how will he pitch inside? Can he pitch inside with effectiveness, not just going in there, but trying to throw strikes inside? There's another one at one and two. Now the count. Shot out to right. Paul Tate's there to make the catch one down. Well, I tell you, anything that gets elevated today, be on your toes, all of us, because that wind is howling. Now, Betty, Gusts up to 30 miles an hour today. Yeah, you see right before he threw that ball, Dave, Freddy, uh, Fernando Gonzalez was hit, touching his head. was like, hey, be smart right here, be smart. And they, he wanted it off the plate, but you don't want it up there, you know, mid-thigh. See Mo about shot that off the wall. Here is Blake Burke. One home run shy of tying the school record for career long balls. This one, though, not going to leave the park, but it could drop. And it bounces off the wall. Burke around first on his way to second, and he will wind up with a double. His 16th double of the year. One thing we have as pitchers, we have this many barrels today. Uh, George is doing a nice job barreling up three, and you see back to back hitters with the ball and square it up right here. And that's a beautiful swing right there by Blake Burke, and he has done it in his Tennessee career. Just keeps piling up those extra base hits. Has 25 extra base hits, came in hitting 396, and now the three hole hitter. Robin Villeneuve, the designated hitter. Villeneuve. Last night went 0 for 3. Good score run. Gonna reset the clock. There was some issue with the wrist, wristband on Leighton Finley's glove arm right there. You see that? Getting the pitching information. Oh, and one as he starts off, Villeneuve with a breaking ball. Villeneuve transferred in from Weatherford College. He's from Quebec, Canada. Oh, big cut. This is 0 2, another breaking ball. Yeah, nice pitch right there. Did he went slider first pitch was more of the get me over. It doesn't have to be your best one because most guys don't want to swing. Breaking ball first pitch and then he throws a much better pitch. Kept it a little bit farther away and now you get the guy swing in a little swing mode. So now you can expand with the fastball. You see Gonzalez points to the head again. Hey, be smart. Little slider off the plate. Villeneuve led junior college last year when he hit 28 home runs. His first SEC hit also left the yard. Came against Alabama last weekend. Or two weekends ago, I should say. Blake Burke out at second base after that double. Called strike three. Paints the black. That'll be out number two. Oh, that's 
you talk about setup, breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball, all the way, all the way in right there. Just freezes him with the fastball on the black. Unbelievable pitch right there by Finley. 19 strikeout of the year for Leighton Finley. Georgia got a nice performance last night out of their starter, Charlie Goldstein. Gave up nine hits to this Tennessee team, but kept him at bay. Just two runs across for the Vols in those seven innings. Goldstein went six innings. One of the better arms out of the bullpen for Georgia, Brian Zeldin, closed it out for that one inning of work as it was a seven inning run rule game. Out off at the plate, one and one. Well, David Goldstein, how about that? He's sitting at 4 0, Friday guy. I mean, not your typical, what you would think, Friday night stuff, right? He, you know, he's not the mid to upper 90s, but when you have a lineup like that, he's just going out there, just getting out. So he's got more hits than innings pitch. And, you know, the walk rate's a little good, but he's done a good job of battling. And, heck, the lineup produces, and he, he's 4 0 for, for a team that's got, what, six, seven wins in conference already. Yeah, he's not, uh, you know, you think Friday night starter in the SEC first round pick generally comes to mind. You know, whoever you're right. throwing out there, Charlie's going to be competitive. He's just uh, not afraid to throw strikes and not afraid to give up a hit or two along the way. Well, I think when you know your lineup can score with anybody in the country, right. it, it allows you to relax out there. And especially they've done an unbelievable job of scoring early and often. So then that gives you the ultimate confidence to tip on that mound. Throwback by Finley was the quote baseball move to reset the clock. He was running out of time, wasn't ready to throw a pitch. Here's the 2 1. Fouled off again. That's the part of the pitch clock I don't like. Yeah, you know, I love the fact that it does speed the game up and everything. But there's there's so many things as a pitcher you're taught, hey, don't throw this pitch unless you're ready, like with ultimate conviction. And so just being able to step off, clear the head again, and go out there. Now you gotta, you know, do an inside move or a spin move and <laughs> lollipop a throw over. It's the new reset. That's all. Count full now, three and two to Kavaris Tears. Tears has been a tough out all season long. Their top hitter with a 400 average. Two down in the inning. Now there's two on. Fastball misses up. Tears. Yeah, I like that, especially with two outs. You want to talk about extending an inning. He'd already got two quick outs. Pitch count now, 16. You, 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 you have to be able to see some pitches early. You don't want to let that starter just, you know, cruise through the first, cruise through the second, and get, get comfortable quickly. Here's Dylan Dryling, the sophomore, out of Hayes, Kansas. Shoots this one out to left. This is to the wall, and it's out of here. Three-run blast, Dylan Dryling, his ninth of the year, and Tennessee jumps out to a three-to-nothing lead. That day, you talk about good at bat, right? Extending in the two out ball, and all of a sudden you bring up a guy, a lot of pop right there. I mean, that's just a pretty swing. Just let the ball travel deep, trust in his hands, and he goes out there. And guess what? You mentioned the wind, just put it up in the jet stream and watch it go. And now we got a three nothing lead, Tennessee. Seventh home run allowed by Leighton Finley. Just like that, a three nothing game. And here is Dean Curley, the third baseman, stepping in. Curley from out west in California. 
Started the year at shortstop due to some injuries. Tigo was banged up a little bit, so they moved Curley to shortstop. That one stays inside, one and one. Curley, of course, best known for his uh, explosive night when he tied a school record with three home runs against Kansas State, the first freshman at Tennessee to accomplish that feat. He also tied a Tennessee freshman record with nine runs batted in in that game. Just off the plate. Early with two for three last night. Fouls it back, count even at two and two. Ball up to 95 miles an hour. Did he go? No sweep. Can't be full. Three and two now. That's a good pitch. That's a good pitch. Just be able to hold up. We kind of short change him a little bit, Dave. 91 to 93. He's pumping some fives already. He'll be juiced up. And another wall. A double. Two walks and a home run so far here in the first inning for Leighton Finley. And here is Hunter Inslee, the center fielder. Coaches in green in their head. Just the no out walks and the two out walks were with loose ball games. You know, obviously, this extended the inning, but it also, so he's seven or eight pitches past that two out walk, but it's the home run, and now another one followed that. So coaches start to see, hey, did he let that home run affect him? You know, you're starting to nibble. Early on, he was trusting his stuff going right at the hitters. I don't know if the, the double. It's a three run homer by Dylan Dryling. Opposite field job. Here's Hunter Inslee, the junior, 284 batting average. He squares up. Gonzalez's throw is high and off the mark down into center field. And it looks like Curley's going to try to stretch this one over the third and he'll get there in time. Well, that ball came out awkwardly for Gonzalez. Yeah, it's a tough, throw, tough ball to throw, and you see that it, the ball's down, breaking ball going down. He has to pick it, so he does a nice job of picking it, but I love the aggressiveness right here, just trying to get into some more position. You're making something happen with two outs, and then all of a sudden, bang, tough throw off the glove, moving up to third base, and now you can score. Doesn't have to get a hit. You know, now the ball bounces away from the catcher. You're in there for the fourth run. That's in there for a strike. Inslee turned around and said, are you sure? <laughs> home plate umpire Eric Gaucher, yeah, I'm sure. So we'll try to get here 1-1. One, one. Well, that time Gonzalez thought he had one. Nobody's sure. <laughs> if I'm a hitter, I'm re I'd rather that be called the strike than the one right before, because the one before just looked awkward. That's actually a pretty good pitch. It's two and two. I love when catchers when, when they when they hear they think it's a strike and then they hear ball, they give it that double clutch. It's a subtle little like you're saying something without really saying something. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's the, their little mind tricks they're trying to play on the umpire. Yeah. Off the plate again, three and two. Boy, Finley's just missing his spots by a few inches. And it's cost him here in another full count. Yeah, when, when you really think that you have to be perfect, then you don't have to. I mean, but you you got to work to the outer third, not necessarily the black, and that's why he's missing just a little bit off. 
Like that's a competitive pitch right there. That's where he wants to live. But that's because he lived there 2 1 to even it up in 2 2. The fastball was right there. Um, there's some days where you have it. Like you lift the leg, you release point, it's going to be on the black. You just know it. I'm going to dot that catcher. But there's a lot of times where the ball's just not going where you want to. And you got to, you know, cut the plate. And sometimes halves are most likely thirds and really just work out of third instead of the black. Now it's into shallow right field. And that'll be caught by the second baseman. Four for eight. And they went on to win 16 to two yesterday. First time Tennessee had been walked off. Tennessee's walked off a bunch of folks over the last two years since this seven inning run rule was instituted. But they've never felt the pain. And I'm sure they didn't like it. They came out early and got a three spot on the board in the first to lead Georgia. As we move to the second inning, ball takes the senior out in right field today. A couple of home runs for the senior. Well, you mentioned early, you know, how do you get over that, man? I mean, we talked about flushing it, but this is how you get over it. This makes it a lot easier when your offense goes out there and puts up a three spot early, and then now you know you have the guy that you want out there, but you mentioned calls like he's been unbelievable, and so that's one of those games you kind of just chop it up, move it on, ran to a hot lineup, uh, because he's been really good this year. So was this. This was really good by Bean. Yeah, a little change up. He's going to mix in all those pitches, and I love the, the just the strut now, you know, because he's he looks like he's got a little bit more confidence. If the first inning wasn't like that, he was he got barreled up a little bit here and there, but now three runs can can instill confidence in you on the mound. Beam entered the game with a 7.7 .7 K to walk ratio, which was top 20 in Division One. He just pounds the strike zone. He had a unique game against Alabama few weeks back where he pitched eight innings in the game but got hit pretty hard early but kind of battled through the whole thing and ended up throwing a complete game gave up eight hits six runs but had six strikeouts through 101 pitches yeah, but that's Tony Tony Vitello was saying for the game it just kind of shows you what kind of kid this is didn't let it phase him and in, on, in the last five six innings he was unhittable I think retired 13 straight at one point yeah I remember watching that one and it was nothing after the third inning right so he gets hit up pretty good with you know first second third inning and the mark of that good starter is you, you kind of get in there and settle in and he, he absolutely cruised and Alabama was able to win the Sunday game, but if Tennessee would have won that game, you'd have had to give a lot of credit to Drew Bean because sticking out, pitching that final inning, and, and not allowing the bullpen to have to come in there, you know, they were they were stocked, ready to go on Sunday. Pop up to second baseman Christian Moore. He was surrounded by a lot of orange jerseys right there. And Christian Moore said that was a tough, not the easiest, but. Winds at 15 to 20 miles an hour, gusting to 30. They got so last inning. The, the one last inning at second base from right field, it was like you, you see the feet start to shake a little bit. But yeah, those flags haven't dropped. That's the straight, you know, straight out to left field, and that's with some authority. So Gonzalez is retired, two down now. Blake Chadwick, base hit through the left side. First pitch he sees. I see. I'm okay with that as a as a pitcher and just as a coaching staff, right? You're thinking, hey, he's attacking with the fastball, and it's it's a little bit up, a little bit too much of a plate, but it's first pitch hit. So now you go back after the next guy, you get another, you know, a quick out, and it's, that really doesn't affect you. So it's showing you that, hey, I'm attacking the strike zone and want a little bit more downhill, which he, he's done really well so far this inning. That one just stayed up on him a little bit. So here's Sebastian Murillo, the senior. There's that double pump for you from the catcher. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Go back to first. Murillo out of Huntington Beach, California. Played at Long Beach. 
293, 78 games. Gorilla was actually playing on his travel ball team from out west, but was in Atlanta for a big World Wood Bat event. His dad, Jose, who was coaching, decided they were going to just kind of come check out Georgia. And actually, Wes Johnson was out of town, and he actually ran across Kirby Smart, talked to Kirby for a bit. Kirby sold him. Here he is. But they always said, right, he, Kirby can recruit, so I guess he can recruit no matter what sport it is, football, baseball. If you can sell your school, you can sell it. Well, some big things going on in Georgia with their baseball program as this one's lifted off the bat. Down the line and right, and a diving catch in foul. They're going to say fair territory, but that'll be the third out of the one. Was there last year. This team right now ranked fifth in the country. I think there may be, you know, a pitcher away from kind of being that same kind of dog, you know? I don't mean that in the yep. Georgia Bulldog sense, but being that same kind of team. I think there's just maybe that one element. It, there's always those what ifs, right? Because there is a guy that was in that uniform that's pretty good and still pitching in college baseball. You know, last yeah. game Burns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he would look good still. Yeah. yeah. He actually, think, uh, North Carolina touched him up this year. Guy gave his first L, but I mean, that guy's off to an unbelievable start. You imagine, you know, uh, I think that's what they, they hope to imagine is he and Drew Beam, you know, one and two attacking lineups, but just the nature of college baseball right now. Because he has stepped up and filled some of that void, but just maybe that that third starter, that dominant guy. You know, you think about their rotation: Dolander last year, Bean, Burr. I mean, you go on and on. I mean, they just had a lot of lively arms. I don't know if they have that quantity this year. Yeah, I mean, just think about what Causey would look like as the number three, or possibly even you know the midweek guy, or right. you know the bridge to the back of the bullpen. Caught out there in center field by Charlie Cunning, but he's, I'm guaranteeing you he's probably a top five. So it's just a matter of how he finishes and how somebody else finishes, like a Condon and uh, a Caglione. I mean, you, you start playing with guys that are that good, you know, top five pick is a top five pick. One down. And Finley trying to regroup after that three run first inning. Had a couple of walks, gave up a three run homer. Number nine hole hitter, Ariel Antigua. Just his third start. Was injured early this season, just couldn't get on the field. That opened up things for Dean Curley. Misses at the knees, two and two. Well, he's been all over the strike zone. I mean, the fastball off the plate. And, and you got to give Fernando Gonzalez a lot of credit. He makes those pitches look even better. Um, I like the way he sets up outside. He kind of turns that body just a hair. And so when he hits that zone, when he hits his mid, it feels like it is always a strike, but he is just missing. Didn't miss there. Fastball right by him. That'll be out number two, and that is the second strikeout of the day for Leighton Finn. Now batting the second baseman, number nice one. Approach right Christian Moore. No, you got Antigua. He's got seven bats on the year. And you see the defensive swing. He's he's probably looking to break the ball, trying to stay on it. But fastball's got a lot of height. 95 miles an hour. You can't just uh, react to it. That ball's going to be there. you got to be, you know, sitting on that and reacting to the other off-speed stuff. Top of the lineup now, Christian Moore flew out his first time up. Now well, that one straight back. Zemo chasing down the Tennessee uh, the career home run record. 
He has 37, needs three more to tie. He's chasing his teammate, Blake Burke, who's a couple out in front of him with 39. And he is on deck right there. I was going to say, the hard part is because he's, he, yeah, you could do good, but you're chasing the guy that's doing it as well right behind right. you. And, uh, but I like the way he's, the body's developed. I mean, he looks a lot thicker and still being able to move him. He's still playing a good second base, but really filled out the size. And that's, you know, obviously you get a little bit stronger, especially with these bats, you can be able to put the ball in the yard. Oh, and two on Christian Moore. Got him. Inning is over. Paints it again. Three pitches. Didn't start that way, though. They got swept at Kentucky. Really just totally dominated by the Wildcats in the opening weekend of the season. But Georgia responded nicely by sweeping Alabama the following weekend and win game one here in Knoxville. Colby Brandt steps in the sophomore. Here's a chopper out to Christian Moore. Played him perfectly over the first out of the first out of the inning. Dave, you mentioned that the sweep to the hands of the back cats. I think now it's starting to get around the league. It's like, well, how good is Kentucky, right? Because I mean, they played Georgia, Missouri, now they're at Ole Miss, but you're like, hey, they they keep winning. And well, like, oh, well, they haven't played, well, Georgia. Obviously goes and sweeps Alabama, comes to Tennessee, and Bama wins a series against South Carolina, who beats Vanderbilt. So, like, you know, all these things are happening, and you're going, well, maybe Kentucky's not as bad as people thought they were. Yeah, they are gathering uh, attention as we speak. Uh, they have, I think, uh, got themselves in a, in a spot now where they've shown enough. They're sitting there right now in the D1, top 25 at number 24. So that national recognition is coming along with Kentucky. And it's sometimes, yeah, as you Georgia. said, at some point, you keep winning ball games, people got to take notice. You're right, especially in this league, right? And I know Georgia, I think I saw something with Kendall Rogers say they were, what, the next one or two out? So you're talking 10, 11 of the top 26 teams. It just shows you. I know that every, all these coaches say it's a gauntlet and, and all these things, but it, it truly is. You can't overstate it, how each weekend, whether you, you know, it, a, a series win or a sweep is within a couple plays. That's how easy it is, and it can go either way. In terms of the front line starters, but uh, last week, or yeah, maybe it was last week, Hagen Smith and Arkansas was at Auburn, had a chance to Hagen Smith through on a Thursday night, so hopefully we'll have him again this coming Thursday because he is something else to watch right now. No, he's putting up numbers. I mean, that's what we're starting to see, right? You're, Paul Skeens did stuff that you're like, man, we've never seen before type stuff, and then Hagen Smith is, I, I saw something, he's just kind of right behind him. He's not quite as good as the numbers from Paul Skeens, but he's not far off. After the wall, beam. A little emphatic with the fastballs. And a pass Charlie Condon, who doubled his last time up. Lays off the high pitch. Condon's average. At 5'11. Boy, hit that one on the barrel out in front a bit. But Dave, you see the catcher slide in. And that's one of those, like, you, you have to. You have to slide in on these big guys. You know, caught in 6'6, six, six, wants to get the arms extended. You see right there, got a two homer lead over Grant Nip and Campbell. But if you slide in and that ball doesn't quite get in, that's what's going to happen. He's going to put the barrel to it. So you've got to really get in there and drive that ball in. Another one fouled the same spot. But this is one of those scouts take notice at bats. You have, you know, it could be a first round pitcher and a guaranteed first round hitter, and you're seeing. You know, he's throwing fastballs in, he's throwing breaking balls, he's trying to bring the kitchen sink to him, and Charlie Condon just keeps barreling him up. That one is hit deep into the air. It is way out of here into the party deck. Charlie Condon does it again with two strikes. His 18th of the year, and it's a 3-2 ball game.
man, oh man, this guy is something else. Yeah, Dave, this is, that's what it was. It was a fastball trying to get in. The catcher goes in, but the fastball doesn't quite get in. He pulls the hands in and just knows him. He strong hitter, good leverage, good extension right there. And look at the dugout pointed up. They know what's going, especially when he puts the bat to it. They you got a feeling it's it's leaving the park every time he swings right now. That is the fifth home run allowed by Beam this year. RBIs 38 and 39 for Condon. 109 off the bat with 410 feet. Twenty five of those a year ago. Something tells me he's going to surpass that. Just guess. I, <laughs> I think you're a good guesser. It's good. Yeah, yeah, right. In, in the, Best part about that, Dave, that's a 96 mile an hour fastball that's going in. And he's able to get the hands in, keep it in, because a lot of guys will, a lot of guys might hit that, barrel that, and it's going to be that long, loud strike that goes 400 feet foul, right? And But he's able to keep the hands in, and he keeps that ball in the left center field and then puts it in the second deck in left field. He's on another level right now. It's early, and you kind of, you kind of hate talking about it, but I mean, the reality of it is, we're in the third week of the SEC slate. And he's on pace for an historic season by any hitter to ever play college baseball. That one's hit a mile in the air. See how Christian Moore, he, this time he gives way to Tears, who comes all the way in. <laughs> then popped up in foul territory his first time up. Yeah, I, Dave, I mean, there's so many things we can say about Charlie Condon, but I think one of the biggest things, too, is after his year last year, right, now, like, now the spotlight's on him. He's more than produced with the spotlight on him, but what it does is it takes the spotlight off of a lot of the other Georgia hitters. And so you're going, hey, Collins, you know, double-digit homers. He's right here, double, almost double-digit homers for Goldstein. And these guys and everybody else is still producing, but, like, there's really not a spotlight on him. That'll be a fair ball in the corner. Goldstein around second. He'll wind up with a stand-up two-out double. His seventh double of the year. Oh, just stayed fair down that right field line. Got him to the corner. Georgia with a runner in scoring position again. You know, Beam's trying to go in. Listen to the catcher again. He's in. He's just not getting that ball in. And, and again. If you keep missing the spots, you still got to give a lot of credit to the Georgia hitters, though, because they're, they're keeping the hands in. They're not getting the head of that bat and hooking that ball down the line that would go foul. So keeping it fair, you got to give them a lot of credit. And they keep doing it. So here's Paul Tates, the right fielder, struck out looking his first time up. Falls behind his second at bat, 0-1. Shot out to right field, and that is not played very well by Kavaris. Tears, that'll get all the way to the wall. Goldstein will score, and Tears, or Tate to wind up at second base and an RBI double. You're right, that was not well played. The first step's in. That's just another ball that's up in the zone, middle part of the plate, and that's just a good piece of hit right there. That's what you want. It's kind of where you set up the tee when you walk onto the plate, but yeah, Tears takes in instead of going back on that first step, and I guess he's thinking the wind's going to cut that down, but that ball jumped right over his head for a double and another run for the Bulldogs. Tied at three now. Fernando Gonzalez had a home run last night. He has five long balls on the year. He popped up his first time against Beam. Fourth Georgia extra base hit this afternoon. We're in inning number three.
George is now, by the way, homered in 25 of their last 27 games. They didn't homer against UNC Asheville in one game against Kentucky. Now have 23 homers in their last five plus games. We're gonna miss one and two. One of the things Wes Johnson decided to do when he got this job is recruit to the ballpark in Athens. We need some guys that can deliver some balls, a short fence and right, right center. Make sure you got some guys that can do that. Now, Condi can hit him out anywhere. Ball smoked, gloved for a second. It looked like that went off Moore's glove. Had it for a brief moment. At least slowed it down, but that'll get another Georgia run in. It's 4-3 dogs now. Well, Dave, he started this at bat with probably his best fastball. Good downhill plane, then he goes breaking ball, and it's it's up in his own hangs, and that's another one right there. See, that's just, with two strikes, you can't throw, you know, a pitch like that. That's a get me over, and you're right. Simo almost makes that play, and as he tries to pick it, he shoots it into center field for another run, but that's one of those ones where you got to be able to bury that, and sometimes you just get a little amped up, and the hand, the fingers can't get in front of the ball, and... Yeah, there's no, I don't think, you know, there's nobody in the pit right now, so it's, it's one of those. D. Nelson Stadium, part of the new addition right there. The new seats down that left field line. Clayton Chadwick singled his first time up. Last that went through the right side. George is going to have them first and third and two outs. So much damage by the dogs here with two outs. Two doubles and two singles. Yeah, they're hitting. It's, it's, it's every pitch, too. I think that's the changeup right there. Just instead of going away, it goes in right to the barrel. Gonzalez hit the break. Black actually goes right under Blake Burton. They already get that a hit. Yeah, yeah, single to the, the right side. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty sure you asked Mr. Burke, he's going to say, Yeah, I should have made that play. So now it's Sebastian Murillo, the ninth man to come to the plate this inning for Georgia. How's the first pitch back? Georgia has seven hits already. Beam has allowed 12 runs in his last 16 innings of work. He's allowed four two-out hits this inning. Seems like he got really frustrated. If we go back to Corey Collins at bat, he walked Corey, and after that, you could see his demeanor change a little bit. He was frustrated, tried to power up on a couple of fastballs to Condon. That one is belted deep to left, and you can kiss it goodbye. You can see why the dogs lead the country in home runs. They're second this inning. Murillo's second of the year. Day. This is a team coming into this game on pace for like mid 90s LSU, you know, 188 type numbers. They, I think they're on pace for 166 homers. And when you're getting this kind of production from the nine hole Murillo, watch this little bat flip. Oh, that feels so good. He knew it. Bam. I mean, that's just look at you see, catch us in. It's time to run right now, my man. But that's just production from up and down the lineup. And you're starting to see the swings because the confidence is there because the top is taking care of it. The bottom is like, hey, there's nothing expected from us. We can go up there with ultimate confidence and also produce. Or last weekend, in the first game of a doubleheader, and the game was over. But he threw his helmet coming around third. George had already been warned for an excessive celebration, but because he tossed his helmet, it was in front of the Alabama dugout. 
He felt it was excessive and dangerous, and so he was ejected for that game. Uh, it's kind of the new way of college baseball. This one's grounded back up the middle and another base hit. I mean, it is just a hit parade right now for the dogs. What's your thought on that, Dave? I mean, that's something where um, a, a walk-off grand slam, like I guarantee you the Alabama dugout did not take offense to a guy rounding third base and tossing a helmet, you know? It was the. Uh, it wasn't really. Even though he did bump our home plate umpire Eric O'Shea there, I think that was completely accidental. I, 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 I do think it was the excessive bat flip that got the attention not only of our umpire, Mr. Gauche, but, but Cal Stark as well. Yeah, and they're just trying to cap. You, you know, I mean, it, Lance, it's one of those things where it, it was getting out of hand a little bit. Uh, the bat flips, the posing, all that. But there has got to be some sort. I mean, you got to enjoy the moment. It's hard. It's a game of failure. Right. And he, he's thinking, hey, this is a first round guy. I, you know, he's trying to showcase. You know, there's scouts in the stands. Look, like, hey, I can do it. You're right. Um, you know, maybe the flip, but get out of the box, right? I think that's what Cal Stark's saying. Look, hey, you can watch it long enough. Hey, get, you know, especially the the kind of banana turn out of the box off the home run. He's want you to get out there and, and get you your trot. But I agree, in a game of failure, Sometimes you got to be able to enjoy some of these moments because they come around as often, right? George has had an explosive third. How about a seven spot on the board? <laughs> Obi Branch stands over at first base. And here is Corey Collins with eight homers in his last five games. The reigning SEC Player of the Week. Over his last five games, he's hitting 650, eight homers, and 19 runs batted in. Two three run homers last night. Fouls that one off. You got to think you're sitting in front of Charlie Condon, which we, oh, we can't overstate that he might be having the best season in college baseball history that we've seen in a while. So you got to think nobody wants to face him. You mentioned that at bat to Collins. He goes four straight pitches on the walk, and yeah, he got fired up a little bit, and he gives up the home run to Condon the next at bat. So, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's like, it's gold sitting in the spot where he's at. You know, when he's like, Wes Johnson asked me to lead off, I'm like, absolutely, go ahead, put me in that spot. Well, he's delivering. He misses inside, and that'll be ball four. Kirby Connell getting loose. Already a home run this inning for Condon. Keeps it on the ground. Chopper to short. And dropped there by Antigua. Just a straight boot by the freshman shortstop. Felt the pressure because there was a high hopper, and you know, Condon, I mean, for a big guy, he, he runs really well. He's playing center field, so he feels that pressure. The runner crosses him a little bit. I don't think that affects him, but he, right off the turf, it just eats him up. And I think he's trying to go quick to get Condon out there, but yeah, you think you make that ground ball and you're able to get out of that inning, and the play doesn't get made and it extends it. But this is. Connell's been in, in one of these situations. He's like you said, he's pitching every situation possible. So this is nothing new for him. He can get out of this. Slade Alford. It's a fastball in there for a strike. Kirby Connell leads all D1 pitchers, active pitchers, now with 103 appearances. Kirby's got some real, he's, he's a, a magician out there on the mound for a guy who doesn't throw hard. He's usually mid-80s, 85, 86, but he'll tell you, though, he's touching 88 these days. That's what he's telling you. <laughs> right, what do they call it, crafty lefties? You know, mix it in a little bit, relying on movement. Now, he's, he's a bulldog on the mound. And he just touched 88, so he wasn't lying. <laughs> Two and one to Slate Alford. Another one on the ground. This time they'll try Curley at third across the diamond. 
and that'll get the balls in the dugout. But Georgia strikes for seven. Big him a catcher. And minor league ball running second base for the Twins now. Oh, my goodness. Blake Burke just tied the Tennessee career home run record with this mammoth blast to start the bottom of the third. Chances for some fireworks, and we have seen them. The pitching, you mentioned, we have some of the best pitching coaches in, in this in, uh, game, but they're not loving this because that is a beautiful swing. The arms get extended. This is everything you want as a hitter, and not allowing your team to settle in with that deficit. He's like, hey, we're going to go back out there, and it's a team that's going to keep fighting. But man, was that number 40 on this on in his career? That's it. Just wow. tried Luke Lipsius. Oh, 117. <laughs> 4-11, his 40th career jack. You know, it, it leads me to this. We, we talked a little bit about it during the break there, but Leighton Finley sat around. I had to be close to a half hour on that bench. And just not sharp coming right out of that dugout after the long layoff, but he'll take the seven runs. Yeah, you, you take the seven runs, but sooner or later you're like, hey, guys, you don't want your guys to get out, but you're like, hey, can, can maybe you get a hit and, you know, round the base, you know, get out because I want to go back out there because you, you like enough run support. But, man, like you mentioned, Dave, they were sitting around for nearly 30 minutes. You got to get up and throw. I'm, so I'm sure he did. You know, you throw at the catcher, but there's still a big difference in the feel of your pitches when you're sitting down for that long. But it also shows you how big. Shows you how big that out for Camille coming in there with bases loaded. You know, if he allows another hit, it, it, the league gets bigger. But you keep it at that four run deficit because you know you have a lineup that can come back and score some runs as well. Yeah, this thing is far from over. I'll be shocked if we're not double digits, both teams, by the end of this one. It does have the, the Sunday feel of the old school SEC ball. Yes. Where, where you, if you've got double digits, you still weren't you weren't feeling comfortable. A home run and a walk. Villanueva is over at first. Varus Tears comes to the plate. He walked and scored. Tears at 400. This season, eight homers and 24 runs batted in. Tavares, another one of those guys that you were talking about, Christian Moore, kind of changed his body and just has added so much power. And his physique has changed dramatically from year to year. Down the bunt, one and one to count now. All right. When you you see guys like that transform, you got You get up a lot of credit to the staff and everything, but their hard work and you know these top-notch programs provide you with so many benefits. Whether it's nutrition, whether it's you know supplements and all those things, as opposing to the weight room. And these guys have facilities that you know can rival big league facilities that they can work out without having to go anywhere you know they leave their dugout go right into their weight room after the games and stuff and so you got to give a lot of credit to some hard work but man schools that provide all these athletes with that kind of stuff is just awesome and so that's why you see these guys really make transformations as they grow into their bodies yeah, I think the college game is really going to grow too. the NIL era is going to keep a lot of guys coming to the college game that maybe perhaps would have tried the minor league system but now they have a chance to make a little bit of money and it's foul back so I mean I, already in the last decade you've seen more kids kind of say no to the draft and come to college because of what we're seeing in the SE it really the, the powerful conferences the ACC SEC Big 12 Sharply hit to second. Glove there. 
What a turn and a double play by the dog. Set up by Murillo. Stab at second base. He gets it to Colby Branch, who turns it at second. Well done, Georgia. Oh, Murillo still feeling good after that hit. That ball squared up on the run, backhanded, and not just he makes that. He makes the uh, throw to the shortstop Branch look easy. He throws that almost underhanded while he's running the center field. That's an unbelievable turn. They had two big turns last night to get out of some big innings, and right there, already with the one run and nobody out, big turn. That's how you pick up the pitcher. And now Dylan Dryling. He looks at a first pitch strike. Rowling with a three-run blast in the first. It gave Tennessee a three-to-nothing lead. And he may have done it again. Did he get enough of this? It's deep to right. And it is caught there by Condon. A little basket catch at the wall to end the inning. But Tennessee does pick up one of the Blake Burke home run. 7-4, Georgia. It's a good career right there, 40 home runs. Congratulations, Blake Burke. Yeah. Kirby Connell starts off the fourth inning with a hit by pitch. So Goldstein will wind up at first base. But, you know, unfortunately for Christian Moore now, he's got to keep chasing <laughs> his teammates you were talking about on that list. I mean, well, Moore's at 37. He may get to 40, but it may not be good enough. R right. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I had that number in my head all year, but guess what? The guy right behind me is jumping ahead too much. Breaking ball misses a little bit high. Shot out to right center. That's going to get down for a base hit. Goldstein around second. He's on his way to third. What are they going to do with him? They're going to send him. Here comes the throw home. It is not in time. And the throw to third, and they'll get him at third. So Tate will pick up the RBI, but tried to stretch it to third base. And he'll be the first out of the inning, but George adds another run. Yeah, just a fastball. Yeah, backside double, keeping the hands in, shooting it that way, and scoring from first is Goldstein. But this is where you've got to stop right there. And even though the throw gets by him, hey, this is pitchers. Why you back up home? Your job's not done. Even if you give up a hit, and then you see Tate right there, don't make that first out at third base. You're in scoring position already. I think Coach Johnson, yeah, it's one of those where you're like, all right, I can't get too mad. You did get that RBI double already. It's two doubles and two RBIs today for Tates. Fernando Gonzalez singled an RBI. Last inning popped up in the second. He looks at a breaking ball for a strike. 0 and 2 now on Gonzalez. Gonzalez is having his best offensive year of his Georgia career. 328 average. Yeah, he, he's one of those guys, Dave, that is so good behind the plate, saves runs, you know, throws runners out that you go, hey, anything you get from him offensively is a positive. But he, now he's turned himself into more than that. He's not a positive. I mean, when you're hitting 328, you're getting that kind of production. He's moved his way up from the bottom of the lineup to kind of that middle part of the lineup. I was going to mention about this. Is I think this game's going to be won by pitching staffs that can not give up the crooked number, right? Just, hey, keep it at a single, you know, single run. Right. And so that was a great job by Cannell backing up and not allowing that to be a big inning. But if he's, you know, pouting and not getting behind the plate, that all of a sudden is a man on third base with nobody out. Thrown out. Yeah. 
So Clay Chadwick. Chadwick singled his first time up, and we thought he singled initially. The second time up on a ball that was shot right past the first baseman, Blake Burke, but they ended up going back and giving Burke the error on that, which saves Drew Bean three runs on a three-run homer by Murillo, the next batter. But because of that error, those are unearned runs. Not a whole lot went right for Drew Beam and his start, but he can take some solace. Three of those runs are coming off the books. That's a great take. I don't know how he takes that ball. That's from the lefty, left on left matchup. Canale kind of dropped down a little bit, slider off the plate. Two and two. We'll do it again, three and two. In his career, Kirby Connell, 8 and 1 with a 2.75 ERA, a whip of less than one, does have three saves. He has struck out 111 and walked 16. I mean, the numbers for a guy who just doesn't really throw hard, but it's just a, a true pitcher. This one grounded out to second base, picked up there by Moore, and he makes a heck of a play. Uh, Georgia also making some noise after getting swept by Kentucky early on. They're starting to grab some national attention. D1 baseball had them just outside the top 25 this week. But still, Arkansas, the number one team in America. Dave Van Horn. Just every year seems to put together a team that can get to Omaha. I mean, it's in, I mean, it's like when they don't get there, you're shocked. Uh, I think in the, what, in the last five years, what was the year with when Cops was rolling? I think it was at 21, 22? 21, 21. And, and uh, yeah, when he 21. won Golden Spikes, that was like the year, and that's when they didn't make it. So, I mean, it's almost like when he has the team that everybody believes, like, hey, DVH is going to Omaha if they don't do it. And then all of a sudden, people kind of sleep on him, and he, he gets there again. Well, they're not sleeping on him this year. Number one team, bullseye on their back, and they get, seems, win after win. Another huge crowd. LSU there this weekend. Huge crowds at Bob Walker Stadium. Big crowds here as well. Closing in on 6,000 this afternoon. As Leighton Finley threw 30 pitches in that first inning and answered back with a couple of back-to-back 12-pitch -back innings. Yeah, I thought he did a nice job after the big inning. Like you said, hey, he came out there, just Burke jumps on the first pitch. It's, it's hey, I'm trying to, you know, after a, your team puts up a lot of runs, you got to go out there and coach. You start, if you walk a hitter, the coaches are yelling at you, hey, we just scored your runs, don't walk hitter. So he's trying to get ahead, and Burke jumps ship, and then did a nice job of just not letting that affect him and continuing to get that quick inning as well. Two and two the count. Freshman third baseman Curley moved over there. This week due to some injuries. Tigua at shortstop moves Curley. So you've got a left side of the infield, both freshmen. This one is to third. Scooped up there by Slate Alford over to first. That'll be the first out of the inning. Now Benny, the center fielder, number nine, Hunter Inslee. Here comes Hunter Inslee to the plate. 
the volunteer center fielder popped up his first time up. Tennessee has been so good here at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Last night they suffered just their second loss in 21 games this year. This one's blasted out to right. Is it enough? To the wall goes Tate, and he'll make the catch. Well, he gets turned around a little bit. We already saw a misplay by Kavar's tears early in the game by Tennessee, and he breaks one way, but nice job of shifting those hips and keeping that ball out there because you, you all of a sudden, I mean, that's where it's going to be is if you don't make the plays, it all of a sudden is going to allow a walk here and then a big blast, and that, that's how you're going to lose the ball game. So ball gets put in play, being able to make those plays is going to be big for the Bulldogs. Two down now for Cal Stark. Flew out his first time, swings and misses. Stark just 182 on the year with a couple of homers, six runs batted in. Boy, that just misses. Hitting 95 on the gun for Finley. It's in there for a strike, one and two. Georgia has already scored 24 runs in a game and a half. Yeah, I looked up and I forgot. I thought we, I was thinking if we were going to see a six inning, but no, it's still the fourth. <laughs> no, we could be here a while. <laughs> and the inning is over. So Finley, fun to watch sitting in that dugout from your perspective at this point. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we've got a really good approach, and right now we're seeing the ball well. We've just got to continue to uh, keep getting off good swings, not chase, and get ourselves in favorable counts. Well, Coach, what did you see from Leighton Finley? Obviously a tough first inning, but to me, he settled down really nicely using that fastball and breaking ball, a good combo. Yeah, he, he's really settled in. Now he's starting to use his breaking ball a little more, and he's got a little better feel for it. You know, he had a rough first and, you know, left the ball out over the plate to Dryling. He obviously, you know, hit it out. But, you know, other than that, I think he settled in and, and uh, you know, started to really execute some pitches. Hey, Wes, you guys did a little extra work this week with some crowd noise and stuff. You think that's helped your club a little bit on the road this weekend? Oh, 100%. Um, you know, our guys, you, you, this is a, you know, they've got a decent environment, good environment here, actually. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to stay focused and, and concentrate through all the noise. Well, listen, a lot of baseball left to play. Thanks for joining us. We'll let you get back to business. Thanks, and go dogs. Wes Johnson, his first year as a skipper of this Georgia team. And, well, he has brought some confidence with him. You know, one thing I took from the interview we, we had with him, our little Zoom call, just kind of learning is, and, and a lot of coaches, you hear it all the time, but like, you know, you, people, players, are, you know, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And you could really just hear in his voice how much he truly cares about the college game. And that's why he, you know, he left Pro Bowl to come back to college and, you know, at LSU and then gets that first head coaching job and just showed his players truly how much he cares about them, how much he wants to grow them as men, obviously, and as ball players. Gorilla grounds out for the first out of the inning. The other part of that story, like this week, he knew that this was going to be a tough place to play, especially a Friday night opening game. Uh, these two rivals, uh, there'd be a little bit of noise, and he practiced on Wednesday in Athens with a bunch of crowd noise for two hours back in Athens just to get his guys' minds right for what they'd walk into. And obviously, last night, nothing affected them as they won 16-2 to two in the first time Tennessee had ever been run-ruled. And that's something you always hear of, like, in football, right? Teams will pump their indoor with noise when they're going to a certain place. I've never heard that done with baseball, but you might start seeing that as it's uh, they've outscored Tennessee 24-6 to six in the first, you know, one and a half games so far. So it's working for them right now. 
Nine hole hitter Colby Branch steps in and he's grounded out and singled. Baylor transfer, a sophomore out of Lucas, Texas. Behind 0 and 2. Chops this one to the left side. That'll be fielded there by Curley. Shows his strong arm. We'll get Branch for out number two. We'll talk to Tony Vitello when we come back here in a moment at the bottom of the fifth inning, get his thoughts on how his club can get back in this one. Connell, a guy that can do a lot of things for you. They'll try to chew up some outs with Kirby. He's done a nice job. Boy, he gets a lot of ground balls. Swing and a miss to Corey Collins. Corey's walked his last two times up. He barreled one to start the game, lined out to the shortstop. Average at 432 now. 12 homers and 29 runs batted in. Just misses. Two and one now to Collins. Dave, as you said that, looked at the averages. They have six guys hitting 324 and above. <laughs> That's pretty good. That one is mashed, but it's going to be foul. That's over in Fraternity Road. I like that pitch, though. You know, as a as a pitcher, if you feel like, hey, I can go in there, and this is the best they can do, and especially in a 2-1 count, hitters' eyes get big. They want to do that, but it also allows you to kind of get that, steal that strike and not put you in a 2-2 count. Is that one off as well? Especially if you're a pitcher that is not affected by, you know, a, a foul ball that gets crushed. Uh, being able to just lock back in there and know that, hey, I just stole the strike. That one misses low. Collins, his stat line is pretty remarkable. Now, he didn't get a whole lot of at-bats early in the year, but he's getting a bunch of them now. He's got a total of 19 hits on the year. 12 homers and seven singles. He has no doubles. Boy, he lays off that one and walks for the third consecutive time. Kirby Connell just looks up at the sky. He thought he made two or three really good pitches to Collins that at bat. Well, that just shows you how a guy feels so comfortable in the box to be able to lay off that because that is a tough pitch when the pitcher knows, like, I made the pitch I wanted. Left on left matchup, and he's able to lay off of it. And what is that? Three straight walks. Uh, just showing you seeing the ball really well, and not what you want to do. Walk the guy, especially with two outs to face, Mr. Charlie Condon. Well, I think that there's Frank Anderson, longtime pitching coach. Had a few comments after that last pitch, but Kirby Connell, the veteran pitcher, trying to take a deep breath, regroup. Because now you get Charlie Condon. By the way, Condon. Today is three for three. Ground ball to the left side. So Antigua's throw is a strike to first. The beginning is over. Georgia couldn't play ball. Coach, thanks for stepping uh, aside for a moment to speak with us. Yep. You know, mindset last night, obviously, uh, that was a tough one. Uh, your message to your club about trying to flush it, get back, and, and how do you get back in this one? Well, I think you're familiar with our series in Alabama. Um, so you got an example to point to that's in recent history where we were able to win by a marginal, you know, a pretty good margin on Friday there. And we end up losing the series. So a lot of this whole thing is you judge your weekend based on how the whole series went. And, uh, you know, you can't win the series if you don't win today. So that was, that was in short the message. Well, Coach Blake Burt, I mean, I can't say a lot of things about him, but just ties the program record. What has he meant to your team this year? 
Uh, he, he's a true leader. I mean, as far as practice, locker room, dugout, off the field, he's a guy that guys gravitate to. And he's used a lot of lessons. I think he learned from older guys, especially his freshman year. And then last year, you know, he was kind of looked to to be in the middle of the order and, and lead the team. And I think it was a challenge as a sophomore. But by the end of the year, he was a superstar at it. And he picked up where he left off this year. Hey, Tony, we'll let you get back uh, to business. Thanks for joining us. We'll let you go, buddy. Thank you Thank much. Thank you, guys. Georgia 8-4. Tennessee going with a pitch hitter here as Bargo grabs a bat. Bargo hitting for Ariel Antigua, the shortstop who struck out his first time up. So Bargo looks at one high in the zone. They'll check down to third, no swing. Bargo on the air at 350 hitter. hits and 40 at bats for the sophomore. Stays inside. You know, Tony brought up a good point last night after the run rule game, and he's talked about it a little bit, is that, you know, some of those games, Tennessee's had a quite a few run rule games not with not where they're on the bad end of it last night was the first one they were on the wrong side of it but he says it cost you guys some guys that could normally get some at bats late in the game because this one by Barco was snapped out to left to start off the bottom of the fifth but he's also like you know there are some young arms that could get in there in the seventh eighth or ninth inning and get you some work and you take that away and it's kind of hard to build up some guys on the bench in these situations uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, is it in terms of the run rule, good, bad? Are you indifferent? I, I think it becomes indifferent, but I, I like I like being able to get out of there, right? You, you, you're not wanting to get pounded by a team because some days you just can't get out. Some days they, they keep hitting. But I agree with what he says because you do lose a lot of those, you know, that could be Two, you know, that, that could be like two innings worth of at bats that all of a sudden you, you could, you know, unroll the pinch hitters and, and get a lot of the guys, especially conference, you know, at bats and getting to see the high quality arms in conference as opposed to non conference games, but also on the mound as well. I mean, even though they're not high leverage innings, they're still innings in conference games that young guys need to get out there and, and feel that atmosphere. And so I, I do agree with them and think that would be better if they were able to do that. Well, Moore slaps this one down the line. Bargo will stop at third. They'll have him at the corners. Or excuse me, second and third as Moore winds up with a double. For Moore, that'll be his eighth double of the year. And that brings up Blake Burke. Well, watch Gonzalez's glove right there. It starts away and it goes back over the middle. And it's not a good feeling for a pitcher when that glove goes back over the middle. Christian Moore does a great job of just letting that ball travel. And that shows you how hard he gets it. I didn't think he was going to get to the wall. That ball scoots all the way to the wall for that double. The game of extra base hits. Well, with nobody out here in Tennessee with a chance to close this gap. Hit his 40th career home run, his last at bat. Wes Johnson making the stroll out to the mound to talk to. His right hander late and fifth strikeouts, but you're just really trying to get two outs. And if they do score, it's one of those you, you have to chalk it up. You, you got to come in there and get outs. So if you try to get the strikeout, you, you start falling behind guys, and then you give in. That's how the really beginning can open up. He picked up a win against Alabama last weekend. Five strikeouts, three and two thirds, a couple of runs. Started some last year as well as a freshman. Yeah, he's definitely one of those guys that could, you know, bridge the gap to the, the high leverage pitchers in the back end of that bullpen, be able to soak up the fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe in pitching the eighth, just because he has been built up as a starter in the past. Nice day for Blake Burke. Hit a 411 foot shot his last time up. This one will stay in the ballpark as he hits a missile out to right. One run is in. And that's all they'll get. 
They'll be at the corners and still nobody out in an 8-5 game. It just seems like every pitch he swings at his barrels everywhere. Nepal's down, looks a little bit off speed pitch, but lefties love it down and in, and that's his happy zone. And again, just shoots a line drive to right field. I think that's a smart play by holding it up more at third base, especially if nobody out. Don't want to run yourself out of a big inning. Robin Villeneuve struck out and walked. Good. Tried to hit one over the party deck and left. No one one for Villeneuve. Five homers on the year. That hit him. Well, you could, you could see that come up before the ball left his hand. It was kind of an awkward release. God, here would be that curveball just way behind his head. He didn't want to be teaching that out front. Eric Boucher kind of gets out in front of it thinking, but it's a man, it's a breaking ball, you know, you're not trying to hit. They already have the warnings for both the teams, and so that's something you got to remember, too, especially the way this game's going. You know, a big home run right here, you can't celebrate too much if you take the lead because they already have, the warnings have been issued. Bases are loaded, nobody out. Tavares tears. Rounded into a double play his last time up. Christian Moore over at third. Burke is at second. Villeneuve stands at first. <laughs> Tears. His average has slipped just below 400. He's now at 395. for his first hit this year with the bases loaded. You can start to feel that crowd. He gets a hit right here. It's going to start the Tennessee Vol crowd. They're going to get fired up anymore. You know, it's almost like they're just begging for that big hit right here. It's now three and one. Shea's not going to give it to him, and well, this makes this situation even dicier. Again, Gonzalez is a great receiver, and so sometimes he makes those pitches look better, but that, that's it. Dylan Dryling already has a three-run shot today, his ninth of the year. There's a strike on the inner half. Starts in fastball. I would say this classifies as a high leverage situation. <laughs> I agree. Yes, sir. Breaking ball foul back. <laughs> this is what Dryling did back in the first inning. This was right where he just, nobody knew what was going on. Just beginning of the game, knew the wind was blowing. You see it right there, just gets enough of it. Vols thought they were starting off hot, and then the Georgia lineup came back. But you want to talk about a, maybe the leader of the pack, if he's able to do the exact same thing with bases loaded. Boy, he did look awkward nice on that swing. swing. Yeah. Yeah, the way that finished up, he just kind of flinched a little bit. 
Wood, athletic trainer, 24 years with the ball baseball team. Have to take a quick visit with Dylan Dryland, who says he's good to go. Yeah, he's just deacon. He said, watch him act hurt and see if he thinks he can blow a fastball by me. Here's the 0 2. Did he do it? Did he do it? Yes, he did. Grand slam. Dylan Dryland. Tennessee has the lead. It's the classic day to act like, hey, I'm, I'm hurt a little bit. I don't know if I can swing. And guess what? Deeks him into a fastball. Grand slam right there. 102 exit below. And again, just enough. But hey, the grand slam gets it going. The crowd is rocking. There's still nobody out. We knew there would be fireworks. Seven runs batted in for Dryland. Two home runs. Here's Dean Curley. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Well, I think everybody's going to want to go have a little chat with Jeff Wood now before they're at bats. <laughs> Tennessee athletic trainer. A little pep talk to Dylan Dryling. Next pitch is mashed. Yeah, he's got the secret sauce. There's Jeff back there. <laughs> Give him an RBI, right? For the effort. Popped him up right side. College makes the catch, but this is what the swing looked like from Dylan Dryland. Yeah, this is pretty good swing as you'll see. Now batting the center fielder, number nine, Hunter Hensley. And he, he, left, he gets to watch it just enough, and let's get out of the box. That's how you do it, boys. Crowd knew it right when it left the bat. Well, these are the two best home running, home run hitting teams in the country. And we are getting a look at why. Third home run of the day for Tennessee. Georgia has a couple of home runs. Georgia, the nation's leader. They're now up to 80. And there's a strikeout for out number one. Three pitches. And Curly heading back to the dugout. Now number 10, Cal Scott. Oh, change up. Trying to go away, goes back a little bit. But... Popped him up. First pitch. Will it stay in play? Collins near that dugout, and that'll be a souvenir. Off the top of the dugout, a big bounce. Yeah, just a great crowd here. It's uh, Tennessee baseball has become something in Knoxville. Good time to be a big Orange fan. Orange basketball team still playing in the tournament. Rick Barnes, maybe this is his chance. He's had some good teams, but this one is pretty dynamic. Yeah, they got they got an inside presence, outside presence, backcourt's good, so there have to be some excitement around here for that. For the sixth. Start things off with Slate Offer. It'll be three, four, and five coming up for Georgia. 
Dylan Goldstein, Paul Tates. Georgia came into this one with an SEC best five game winning streak. They won four of the last five versus Tennessee. Including last night's 16 to 2 victory. Georgia okay, on the for Tennessee. Year 22 and 4, and Tennessee came in 22 and 5. There's a chopper to third, fielded there by Bartlow, who just came in the game. Pitch hit last inning, starts this one off at the third, and the third base, and makes the first play to come. Here's Dylan Goldstein. He has a double and a walk. Designated hitter on the year. Now hitting 319. You know, what would you call that pitch? A slider, sweeper? I would say more of the sweeper just because of the arm slot. It's just, it has more side to side movement. Serve that one up over the plate. But that's a tough pitch to lefties, man. I, don't, I almost throw that every time. Yeah, if you, especially if you can control it to the outside part of the plate and mix in fastballs in, because then you have a lefty thinking, all right, if it's fastball, it's coming in. Well, if it looks like the fastball, they kind of get a little gun shy. And then if you get spot up on the outside part, and that's what he, remember he had that reaction where he thought he made the pitch, the strikeout to Collins. He right. thought, hey, that, that's my best spot. That's what I've got to do. And, um, but that's what he's wanting to do is be able to mix that ball in. And he also does a great job of working down in the zone. You mentioned a lot of ground balls, and that's why he's getting those ground balls. Works down the zone and mixes that slider. See, that's, to me, that's more of the curveball slider. It's got a little bit more. Yeah. It still has some side to side, but it's got a little bit more up down tilt to it. 103rd appearance. <laughs> for a pitcher, for a pitcher. we're not talking about position guy here. For Kirby Canell, who's, who's a 17-year veteran of the Tennessee program, he has been around for a long time. Graduate student. And the look of the pants, I mean, look at the lower half of that, uh, the, the lower part of those pants. He's rolled them up. Hey, we got I mean, 80s tight roll. <laughs> that's oh, 80s gosh. tight rolls. <laughs> that's beautiful. Ground ball, this could be two. Curly to Moore, high throw, safe at first. Good throw, they had it. Hitting would have been over. Yeah, you can see Moore's reaction right there, knowing that, yeah, because that, that's exactly what you want, a little six, four, and then three, but the throw's a little too high. How about Burke athleticism, catching that ball and coming down, the tag's there, but obviously the base runner's already on the base, but man, get some hops. So Tate will stand at first. Here comes Fernando Gonzalez. One for three today with an RBI. Dave, what did you, how many, did you say, how many appearances for Cornell? This is his 103rd appearance as a pitcher. Again, I just, I mean, it's crazy to think about that. You, you want to know what that sounds like? You got the head coach, or the pitching coach walks near you and you just say, yep, I'm good. <laughs> you don't yeah. even have to ask, right? Coach, after a while, they don't even walk near him. They just say, all right, he's good. He, he, he can throw no matter what. Tony Vitale was talking about the importance of Kirby and this team. He's like an additional coach. Probably get into coaching whenever this baseball career ends for him. He's a character. Well, I could see him in minor league bullpen, just games galore. <laughs> just, I mean, playing. <laughs> that, right. That's where you, get, you start just, you know, antics and just... All kind of things happening out there. Well, this how about this pitch? Yeah, changes direction. So that's a little bit more of the up-down curveball, a little bit slower, and so doing a nice job of 
He throws the tighter, harder slider, but also mixes in that breaking ball, being able to keep the hitters off balance. That one's low. But Kirby uses that rubber on the mound. Sometimes he almost looks like he's not even touching. He's so far on the edge. Hard to really see it there, but boy, he uh, look at look where he is. It works. Just play baseball over there at DBU. Move to the bottom of the sixth inning, leading things off. Dalton Bargo. Dalton's been a little banged up, so trying to get him some some work to get him back in baseball mode. Speaking of Clemson, they shut out Miami seven to nothing today. Just keep trugging along. To the right side, Marillo makes the play. One down. South Carolina. Alabama nine to eight. No, right, 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 Missouri three to one. Kentucky put up seventeen on Ole Miss today in Oxford. They went seventeen to nine. They're right where Coach Mingione wants. Hey, no one's talking about us. Nobody, don't worry about us. And all of a sudden at the top of the East and just winning series after series. Swing and a miss there from Christian Moore. Yeah, Kentucky now with that win today, they go to seven and one in conference play. Pitch by Smith. They had a surprise, and the schedule makers certainly didn't do them any favors, but Auburn's sitting there, one and seven, coming into today's action. Swing and a miss, that one off the glove of Gonzalez. Tags out more, and that'll be out number two. But I think that. You know, you don't want to fall too far behind. The schedule certainly will get better for Auburn as they move on. But right now, they're in the world of her. Okay, I mean, right there, that's Cole Smith. It looked like mixed between a cutter, slider, but everything was just down and away. Christian Moore not seeing that, but you're right, Dave. At Vanderbilt, home against the number one team, Arkansas, then you have to go on the road to AM. That's, was it, three top five teams in a row? And you're like, well, hey, Kentucky plays Georgia, an unranked Georgia. Then they have Missouri and, and an unranked Ole Miss. So it's like that it's just tough. So the whole part about that is, is you can't let these weekends linger and start affecting the next ones. And I know it's that's a lot easier said than done. But I remember back in 2001 and I sent uh, Gabe Gross, the hitting coach at Auburn to text. I said, hey, I remember when you guys started 0 and 9 in 2001 and they won 15 of their next 21 and made the conference tournament. That was back when it was only eight teams made the tournament yeah. and they made it at 15 and 15 and, and he was like man i appreciate that because that's you know that's kind of the mindset they had to have well listen next weekend they host tennessee <laughs> well every coach says it it's like a super regional every weekend well for auburn it's like a trip to omaha <laughs> 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 Burke. This is where you want to face old Blake, right? Nobody on it, two yeah. outs. Absolutely. And, you're, and especially up, up in the count with two strikes early, you're going to have to hit my pitch, and it, it's, it's probably going to be a breaking ball, uh, an off speed breaking ball down. But I like the way that cutter was working. So you get a guy that wants to swing on the, on the heater, you start mixing that. Cut her in. Goes up high with a fastball. That'll end the inning. Uh, kind of blend that in with the stance. Um, so kudos to all the folks that supported this baseball program. 
and help get this thing going in the right direction in terms of facilities. Well, you talked about it early on, Coach Vitello and what he's built here and what winning his program since 2021. And that, that's what happens when you win like that and the school is going to support. They're going to build you something and you're going to have some of the best facilities out there. Oh, I'd like to get a hold of some of that popcorn. There's a strike, two and two, the count to Chadwick. One for three today. Average at 281. 18 hits on the, on the year, three of left yards, seven doubles. Kobe Connell has quieted things down after a shaky start from Drew Beam today. He gave up eight runs. Walk to Chadwick. Yeah, you talked about B -B all of the appearances. Be correct, yeah, he had seven so runs. Gave up right. seven runs for those runs. But with all the appearances, as you said, like he's a guy that can pitch in any situation and look comfortable in that spot. Like whether it's a safe situation, whether it's a bridge, because quietly you look up and we've talked about him, but he's in his fourth inning, and that's the whole part of you going. No way, he's, he's pitched four innings and he's just out there and just continue to mo mosey along and again, only allowed one run in his three and the third inning so far. Sharply hit. Oh, glove there by Moore. Curley tries to make the throw, but not in time, but a heck of a play by Christian Moore. This is another outstanding defensive play. Might be the best one. Being able to glove it, flip it, and heck, almost even turn it. Curly does a heck of a job of just staying in there, really taking that hard slide, gets taken out. But man, unbelievable job by Simo again. Doing it at the plate, doing it with the glove. Love how Coach Vitello talked about him and Blake Burke and just the leadership qualities and how they lead in different ways. But, you know, both of them are, are guys that the young guys can look up to. Maybe he was trying to. I think he didn't like the slide. Yeah. You know, he definitely went right at the bag, but didn't he go past the bag a little too much and, and take out Curly? I, I, I don't. Yeah, I like I that. I mean, it's one of those where he stays down. He he stayed in his crouch. He didn't pop up to hit him. Oh, my goodness. Hammer deep to left. That's over the party deck. Hello, Colby Branch. A two-run shot, and we're tied at 10. Showed you how big that play was by Christian Moore right there to get the lead out. But how about the production? You got Marillo with the blast, three run blast, and now you got Branch with a two run blast. You got five RBIs, two homers. That's just a slider, little slurve coming in right down and in the righty. Again, these guys are, when they hit it, they know it. That's just shows you how I mean, the ball's jumping and they know the wind's blowing that way. And when you know you hit it over the third deck, it's got to feel good. Seventh homer, RBIs, 30 and 31. And you get a two-run shot from your nine-hole hitter, and now Corey Collins, who's been on a nice little heater here the last week with eight homers in his last five games. Go for one today, but has walked three consecutive times. And with one out, nobody on, you're going to see Charlie Condon. 
halfway. Let him swing at 3 0. Caps it. Foul territory. Well, I talked about it earlier, right? He, when a guy's laying off the pitches that he's laid off of, he's got to be feeling really good. And when that's the case in a, in a game like this with the win and everything, and a guy that's on a heater, I love how Coach Johnson gave him the go ahead. Oh, dear. Did he get this? Not enough. Just underneath it. Mile in the air. That'll be the second out. With a big hack from Collins. A glove by Tears, and that'll get us to Charlie Condon, who has three hits today a double, a homer, and a single. Condon does have one triple this season. His average at 5.15. And he looks at ball one. Did you just see Stark right there point at the head like, hey, be smart. You know, he has to hit your pitch. We're going to work corners. I mean, this is something where a walk is not a bad thing in this situation because if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to go right after him, I mean, the way he's swinging the bat. So I like how the catcher, Cal Stark, was like pointing to that head like, hey, let's make him hit your pitch. There's a fastball in there for a strike. Let's see how Condon just takes that like, uh, no big deal. <laughs> Not afraid to hit with two strikes. Even two and two. I mean, start setting up in the left-handed batter's box almost. See where he goes here again, looking low and away. Out over the middle of the plate. Stays in the park, but it's a base hit for Condon, his fourth base knock of the day. But he knows they're not going to come in. And so look how far he goes out and gets that ball. That's probably off the plate. And he just 6'6", six, six, the arms can get extended. He can go out there and get that ball because he, it's almost like, hey, they tried to come in one time. I hit it over the fence. So if they try to do it again, they're probably going to do it. So they're going to stay away. And it's just smart hitting, knowing that. And he just goes out there and gets it. Slate Alford. would like to borrow one of Condon's hits. He's 0 for 4. You're looking at Condon over there, by the way. That is 6'6", 225 pounds, who has played five different positions. He's out in center field again today. People project him as a third baseman, perhaps, at the next level, but, I mean, he's such a great athlete. I wouldn't limit him from a defensive standpoint. I mean, he could turn into a Mike Trout type. Well, you're talking, if he can play center field, and I at, at this level, which you're saying is the highest level of college baseball in this league, then you got to believe he can play center field in pro ball. Or if he can't play center, like, okay, you can move to left, right. Oh, by the way, he also plays third and first. I mean, he, you got to think if he can play third, probably a really good first baseman being 6'6. But guess what? We do know he can hit. And there ain't no doubt about that. The NCAA's leader, batting average, home base. Uh, on base percentage and home runs. And Dave, I think if he was hitting third or fourth, that's when you could start putting up RBIs as well, because it's just he hits in the two hole. Yeah. And with the way Collins is hitting home runs lately, the bases are empty. Two down. You're in the top of the seventh as Georgia. Tennessee knotted up at 10. Back up the middle. And that's going to get in for a base hit. Condon will hold up at second. So the dogs, another two out. Base knock. Yeah, you just mentioned that. How about this, Dave? Nine for 16 with two outs. 
That's how you win games. <laughs> so Sneed up, their designated hitter, Dylan Goldstein. Two for three today with a walk, a couple of runs scored. Goldstein, grad transfer from FAU, two years of junior college before Florida Atlantic. His first season at Georgia. At 297 with 13 homers last year for FAU. Had a really good year two years ago. 333 with 18 homers and 63 runs batted in. And that's going to be a ball. Too much time. Saw the pitch clock hit zero. He called time. Maybe that's what it was. I thought the way that Gaucher came out from behind home plate wants to see the pitch clock. But time was yeah. called before. Yeah, he was point. Yeah, he points at Goldstein, but it hit zero. It's one of those where if Goldstein just waits another half a second. He probably gets the ball. It is 2 0 now. Seventy two pitches now for Canal. Count three and zero. Oh. There's Kirby getting on the edge. He's on one edge to the other edge. Yeah, well, it's lefty and right. If he left-handed hitter, he's on that side where he looks like he's throwing the ball behind that hitter. And right-hander, it basically shows you kind of how he, he thinks he's going to get you out. But trying to use all the angles, I mean, that's he knows he doesn't have the stuff right. He, he brags on the fact that he's now at 88, trying you know trying to pump a little bit higher, but knows that hey, I don't have the overall stuff to. To dominate, you know, just blow it past people. So I'm going to use the angles and just get effective and creative with some of these things. There's a 3 0 strike. Stay in the infield. Burke makes the catch, and the inning is over. Inside Lance Cormier. The wind has slowed a bit, not a, a ton, but it has subsided somewhat from when we started. We were getting gusts around 30 miles an hour, but you can see those flags still. Blowing crisply in this wind. That one has popped up out of play to Villanev, the designated hitter who 0 for 1 with a walk today and a strikeout. Boy, 
that one caught Gonzalez. Fernando has caught a lot of baseball games for Georgia. The senior. Panama City, Panama. And that'll be a called third strike. Gonzalez quick out of the crowds to start the around the horn as he gets it to first base, and that'll be the first out of the inning. The right fielder, number 21, Kamara, here. The ball just has a lot of run. You can see the movement just running right back over the plate. And, and you're right, he doesn't even hesitate because he's like, I know if I'm a little bit on the black and my hand goes back to the middle, that's a strike. He didn't even hesitate going to first base. Steers 0 for 1, couple of walks. Fouls that one straight back. Tony Vitello talking about Tears. Calls him the new Jared Dickey. A leader and a guy that just loves to hit. Looks at strike two. Oh, at the knees, just misses. I like how Colton Smith has settled in, though. You know, he came in and had the tough start you know, to hit the first guy and just got hit up a little bit, but then he, he settled in nicely and he's working on it in, in his third inning. So both bullpen guys have done a great job of kind of keeping the game where it needed to stay. Well, you can see Fernando Gonzalez, he wants that pitch. He didn't even have to do the fake pump. <laughs> Tears went down and got that one and shot it out to right. That is the eighth hit of the game for Tennessee, and one out single. Now batting the left fielder, number eight, Dylan. Well, breaking ball the pitch before, a little back door, and thought he had the strikeout, so he goes to another breaking ball. It's not a bad one. You just see Gonzalez is about to put the glove down, thinking he's going to have to pick it, so good piece of hitting right there by Tears. Dylan Dryling, two for three, couple of home runs. First time he's had a multiple home run game. One that he will not soon forget. A three run shot in the first and a grand slam in the fifth. By the way, that's the sixth grand slam of the year for this Tennessee team. Dryling on the year now with 10 homers and 37 runs batted in. He now has the team lead in that RBI department. And breaking ball. No bite to it, 2-0. Oh. Yeah, the sharpness is not where it was a couple innings ago. Trying to stay away from the fastball, the two pitches that Drawlings hit out. Boy, now it's three and oh. Do you see a swing right here? I mean, this is. I was about to say, the guy's hot. Why not? SEC Equestrian Championship for you next Monday at 9. After the driving walk, Dean Curley now, the freshman. Oh, 
Again, that was one of those moves, I think, in the background. You can see the pitch clock winding down. Yes, look, you see one. Anytime you do an inside move and throw it to a guy nowhere near the bag, he wasn't expecting it. Tennessee today. Three for five with runners in scoring positions. Picked up eight RBIs. Curley trying to pick up his first hit. Curley the freshman. He'll look at strike two. Well, not what he wanted, but you'll take it to get to, to get to 2 a little backup breaking ball. The first one was really good, so this is where you got to be able to expand the zone, make him hit your pitch. That'll get one run in. Tennessee has taken the lead, 11 to 10. But they watch this goes for the third straight breaking ball. And Gonzalez wants it down, and it just stays up. And it's basically another backup. He's not finishing it. And when it's up there, right there, that's just good hitting. And you're right, just inside the third base. Right? It looks like it hits off the heel of his glove. Well, anytime you have a team come back like this, a lot of credit goes to the bullpen canal, keeping the game from getting out of hand, allowing knowing that your offense is good and allowing them the opportunity to keep swinging away. So the double for curling and RBI. Now Hunter Inslee tapped it off the end of the bat. They're going to go home with it, and they got a runner tied up. Now they got a mess going on. Nobody's ever first. They didn't want to throw. The pitcher was home to cover. Smith does a nice job, gets, goes ahead, wants to get the lead runner, and Gonzalez is just going to run him all the way back. But the very last second, Curley takes off. You're thinking, hey, you tag both of those guys, and one of them's going to be out. And then with nobody at first base, by Curley being able to get back to second. That looked like that chaos. <laughs> yeah, that was a little, little leakish. After review, all the field of safe is confirmed. I mean, that's what you're taught running back. So, you know, hindsight, you say, hey, could, you know, should he, should he have thrown it? But that's how you're taught running back. You had two guys on base. You don't think the guy's just all of a sudden going to take off. He's, he's, you know, he's a sit duck when he takes off. But Gonzalez makes the call of not, not to throw him out of second base. Pinch hitter. Chapman grabs a bat. Chapman last night. As a starter for Tennessee. Reese with two for three. Also had a big midweek game as well. The sophomore in Parker, Colorado, is kind of involved in kind of a numbers game in terms of getting on the field. Tony Vitale likes where he is right now, trying to get him another at bat here in a bases loaded situation already. One grand slam for the balls today. Chapman on the year. 419 average, 13 hits and 31 at bats. Two have left the yard and four doubles. Okay, I'm a little surprised to see Colt Smith still in the ball game, just with kind of how it is. The stuff, you know, the breaking ball's backing up on him. It's up a little bit. The fastball's been kind of spraying. I'd have thought Coach Johnson would have gone and get a fresh arm, especially in a big situation like this.
Georgia, Georgia does have Zach Harris up in that bullpen right now. The way he's moving around, it feels like he might be ready to go whenever needed. He is in no oh, hurry. Sure. Yeah, he's got the you throw one pitch when he throws one pitch type of stand there. Off the plate. Shows you, you know, getting tired or not. It's Harris misses inside. At low 90s. Team high, nine relief appearances. He did clock in at 96.7 miles an hour on one of his fastballs earlier in the season. So he's got a little giddy up. That was 94 miles an hour. In his first year at Georgia Southern, went two and four there, 19 appearances. <laughs> two and two, the cap. Yeah, Georgia Southern had some starts, some bullpen appearances, and that's the toughest thing for most high school guys when they get to college is having to pitch out of the bullpen because it's something they've really never done. You know, even if they do it in summer ball, it's like, hey, you're going to pitch in three innings, go get ready. You know, guys are not used to, you know, fire drill and, hey, get ready in one hitter. That one's lifted out to left. Another grand slam for Tennessee, their second of the day. Sometimes, Dave, you got to play to the conditions of the park. We mentioned the wind has been blowing all all day. It's turned as it looks like it's turning the evening, and it's one of those where they just get just enough inside. That was more of a will it stay fair? Will it go foul? Gets it up in the jet stream again. Use the pitcher's velocity. Fargo again. That doesn't look like it's going to be a homer. Sneaks it right inside. Look at that. It is now 16 to 10 as Tennessee has matched Georgia's run total from game number one. Well, there's a reason they're the top two home run hitting teams in America. Base hit back up the middle for Seymour. Might be watching two of the best lineups in college baseball. <laughs> Keep going back and forth, punch after punch. Here's Blake Burke. He 
He and Charlie Condon, the two stars at the plate for their respective teams, and they have not disappointed tonight. Three for four for Burke. He's missing the triple for his cycle, as is Charlie Condon. Condon with a four-hit game. Tennessee's career home run record earlier today with his 40th blast of his Tennessee career. I can tell you what this swing is going to look like, too. He's trying to, get, try to hit 41. It was a big cut. Fouls it back, two and one. And you have guys seeing the ball and swinging the best they are. And you get 2 0. And you, you know, your best pitch is a fastball, and he's a fastball hitter. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see a guy going, I'm going to sell out and see what happens. The old swing hard in case you hit it mindset. Throw down to second. Is in time. That'll be the second out of the inning. Christian Moore is nailed. Just his second stolen base attempt of the year. Watch this pitch. It's almost like a pitch out. Gonzalez is set up outside. That ball is even away. Perfect pitch to throw on. He throws a strike. Christian Moore trying to get into scoring position, but I, I don't know if I like that call, Dave. I, with the left-handed hitter up there, you got the first baseman having to hold the runner on. Even if he steals second, then the first baseman can kind of back up and play better defense. I know Zach Harris didn't mind him running. He got a second out. Base is empty for this guy. Two and two count now. He won't change up to Bargo in that the first pitch he came in. I wouldn't mind seeing that one right here. Everybody's all right. That one shot down there by the end of that Georgia dugout. Yeah, you could tell by Burke's reaction. He could tell it hit him. He kind of flinched right when he after he swung. Draws a walk. Now batting the designated hitter, now number 17, the Robin Villanelle. Back of the inning, Robin Villanelle. Both teams have had an inning where they've batted around today. Not surprising with 26 runs on the board. Surprised it has not been more. <laughs> right. Yeah, we got some, a seven spot, two sixes, a three. A lot of crooked numbers. Big swing from Villeneuve. Boy, this weekend there have been 14 innings. 44 hits, 49 runs, 15 doubles, and 12 home runs. 
14 innings. Let me say it again. 14 <laughs> innings, 44 hits, 49 runs, 15 doubles, and 12 home runs. There's a strikeout to end the inning. Doing that, it seems like, on a regular basis this year. Tenth time this year that Tennessee has broken the single game attendance record. How about that? Well, obviously they've added some seats on the left field line. And as the weather is getting warmer and warmer, they continue to draw more and more. So I have a feeling that we're not going to stop at 10. My right, chopper going to be a tough play. Well done there by Bargo over at third base. One out. After the first two pitches, Canel, I was wondering, I mean, he's had 75 pitches. He had going past 35 this year. And Bargo was just a nice job. I mean, that's a smooth looking play from third base. And, but I was watching Canel going, all right, he looks a little tired. I know it's a six run lead, but you don't want to give the Georgia lineup a chance to kind of create a rally. But then all of a sudden makes a pitch. And that's with just the craftiness that he has. Boy, 2-0 makes the pitch, gets a weak ground ball, and let you guys make a play. Gonzalez. That'll be a foul ball. One and two to count. The catcher. Peebles takes over behind the plate. Peebles got the start last night. One oh for three. And with misses outside. Two and two. Gonzalez, one hit today. And will stay that way. That's under K for Queso. Well, watch those pitches. Perfect spot down under the zone. Again, I just, that's five innings for Kirby Cannell, six of them. He's got a start going. You need that. I mean, we talked about that. Drew Beam soaking up the against Alabama when he got hit pretty hard in the first three, and he finishes up and goes complete game and saves the bullpen. I and mean, this is one of those types of outings for Cannell is to save the bullpen, and you know that way you're fully loaded for tomorrow. He's giving those quads a workout today. <laughs> That 85 dip down pitches. 80, 85 times today, right? 85 pitches, 85 squats. That one misses. By the way, this five innings of work is a career high for Kirby Connell. Pitch count also a career high. His previous was 65 against Campbell in the 2022 regional. Two and two now. He 
walked him. Two out walk to Clayton Chadwick. What's his reaction day? This is a guy that he, like I said, career high everything, and is look at him so frustrated at himself for knowing that he's got this. Obviously, what two out walks do, but knowing that he had him in, in a uh, two-two count, had him set up, and tried to nipple just a little bit too much. So Marilla will look at the first pitch strike. Sebastian with his. Second home run of the year back in the third inning, a three run shot. That should get out of the ballpark, and it does. Up the middle, and that's through for a base hit. Another two strike count, and Canal can't get him out. So two on, two outs. Right, just like you said, two strikes, two outs. Just Georgia keeps hitting with two outs, but I think it's just a, a matter of just 94 pitches in. He's a little tired. The stuff is not as sharp, and so once he's getting the two strikes, Harley Condon are right behind him. Mr. Snead just hit uh, triple digits on that first pitch. A clean, crisp one Hyundai. That one sailed up and away at 101. Has earned a win or a save in six of his seven appearances this year. Last Sunday had a career high six K's in a win against Ole Miss. But now he's behind three and one. I'm giving the old take sign right here. Just seeing what'll happen and Trust the fact that if he throws this one, he's going to have to throw another fastball as well. He let him swing and popped him up. Burke in foul territory. Getting close to the wall and makes the catch. They say no, he didn't hold on. First guy in there, though, is Canel. Look at that. He was the first guy in the camera well. It was a nice job by Burke. I mean, look, he finds the wall, feels it, and then hits his glove. I don't know if he dropped. Oh, no. Looked oh, like he hit caught it. Hits the heel of the glove. So now Sneed will have to make another pitch here. 
Ground ball out to short. Throw over the first by Curley is a strike, and that'll do it. Dog will lead a couple of runners. We'll hit the bottom of the eighth, 16 10. Volunteers. The eighth inning. Start things off with the Volunteers. Tennessee. Seeing a Canaan Peoples up to the plate. First at bat for Peoples tonight. Went 0 for 3 last night. Count. Do up next is Dryling and then Curley. Oh, right off the pitcher Harris, his foot over to first, and they'll get the out. I think that hit his foot. It sounded like it hit his foot. If it did, he's a soldier because he, he there's no reaction. Oh, right off the right off the bottom. Yeah, might have hit one of those spikes. I think you're right, Dave. That's what he said. Let's get that ball out of here. Hit the ball got spiked up. Shoe on his finish leg coming across his body. Nice job staying with it. And get me out. Now the left fielder, number eight, Dylan Curley. Now Dylan Dryling. Homer in the first. Grand slam in the fifth. Walked and scored in the seventh. up to 37 runs batted in. Tops on the team. And he'll look at strike two. Came in top 10 in the SEC, ninth. In RBIs. Something tells me he'll shoot up that list a few more spots after tonight. Last Sunday in Alabama put up a career high four RBIs in that series finale and has reset that number here today. Another ground ball back up the middle, but played nicely there by Branch, and that'll be out number two. Both fall hitters going back to the dugout going, man, what do I have to do? I hit it right up the middle, right what I'm supposed to do, and Branch is just sitting right there, just soaking him up. Double picked up an RBI last inning. Curly 
Stewart, this shortstop coming out of high school and through travel ball. But when he got to Tennessee, he just kind of gravitated toward third base, and that's kind of where he kind of wanted to play. But then injuries forced him over to shortstop, but played a bunch there. But now that Antigua's back, another freshman to play shortstop. They pushed Curley over to third, while Billy Amick is out nursing an injury. He kind of had to shuffle things in that infield. Amick had emergency surgery, appendectomy surgery, so he's going to be out for a little while longer. Wouldn't anticipate him, from what I gathered, talking to some folks, that he would play next weekend. Try to push him back one more. A slow chopper, uh, Harris can't field it. Sometimes, Dave, you can make the pitch. It's perfectly. Hitters just somehow put it in play. That needs to probably be a bare hand. You know, instead of, I don't even know if he has time, if he catches it cleanly with the glove, because the feet really aren't set there. So that probably needed to be a bare hand, almost as you're setting off your back foot to make that play. One to know the count to Hunter Inslee. He's looking for his first hit today. He's got a good breaking ball. Just he, he doesn't want to use it. It's it's mostly been fastball changeups, especially to the lefties. But he's showing that breaking ball, especially if you want to go back foot to a lefty. It's a pretty good one. Here's a strike one and two. Baseball's a crazy game. 24 hours ago, Tennessee only put up two runs. They have blasted away at 16 tonight. A bit concerning, though, that you've allowed 26 in two games, right. though, if you're Tennessee. Gonzalez can't scoop it up on a low pitch. Curly will get the stolen base. Do you ever think that you'd ever have to work on pitch clock awareness? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new day in the world of baseball. Now, yeah, just now, misses. now in all the parks, last year and the years before, they didn't have the clock where the pitcher could see it. So now the pitcher can kind of see it, and you talk about using it to your advantage of holding it until you know the last part but if you hold it too long the hitter knows how he's coming now so um, you'll, you'll find pitchers learn how to maneuver their you know hold so reese chapman checked in a couple innings ago grabbing a bat he walked his lone plate appearance tonight came in to score He's 
He's been on a bit of a tear of late. Running over 500 in his last 10 games with 10 runs batted in. Of course, a lot of that came on Tuesday night in their win against Tennessee Tech when he had four hits and drove in five, run, uh, five runs in that midweek game. Nice change up there. One and one to count. One and two. Harris tried to get out of this one. Georgia certainly would like to uh, not have to go to the bullpen anymore tonight. We have all available arms for tomorrow's game three of this series. And he does get out of it with the strikeout. 19 runs scored off of home runs. Seven of them tonight. Seven home runs tonight. Well, we knew going into it, it was going to be some fireworks, the two most prolific home run hitting clubs. And then all of a sudden you look at the flags and you go, oh, it's blowing straight out at, at a minimum of, you know, 14 miles an hour. It was going to be a good one. I would say of the seven, maybe two on a normal day might not have gotten out of here. They're like Blake Burke's ball was a no doubt. There's Collins. Nate Sneed gets the strikeout to start off the ninth. Well, you got power versus power right here, and that's just reached back saying, guess what? If you can hit it, go ahead and hit it because I'm going to throw it. Sneed's hit 101 tonight. And now he gets to face Charlie Condon. A double, a homer, a single. And then another single, and let's see what he does here. Out to center field. This one is blasted. It is out. Of, are you kidding me? Charlie Condon, a five-hit game with two home runs. Holy smokes, is this guy unreal. Straight away center field off the batter's eye. I mean, the question, hey, can you catch up to the top velocity yet? 98, guess what? Boom. Batter's eye. And he knows it. Like they, that's just off his bat. He knows it's got he's got that kind of pop. I guess you knew it was coming, Dave. He went one for four yesterday, right? When, when you're a 500 hitter, he's bound to get a bunch more hits. A career high five hits for Charlie Condon. I mean, the guy is, I, I've watched him play now two weekends in a row. And he is all that is advertised. Look at, they're like, can I just touch you? <laughs> you're you're I mean, not yeah. real. <laughs> hey, look, we talked to Wes Johnson about it. Uh, a couple days ago about what it's like watching him from the dugout and, and, and he's he didn't have really really words for it he hasn't seen anything like it and he watched dylan cruz last year hover around 500 most of the year but dylan didn't bring this power to the game yeah he already has more home runs than cruz hit last year and so again cruz had an amazing year and it was fun to watch and but this is this is next level it is epic, and it's certainly historical if he stays this way. Shout out to Wright, and Slade Alford is retired for out number two. Coming to now with 19 home runs. Oh yeah, and 11 doubles. Get you out to Auburn and Texas A&M when we are finished here. Logan Jordan, no grabbing a bat. He will pitch it here with two outs. He looks at strike. By the way, if you're wondering, 
Condon's average after his five hit game is up to 525 now. That's when you're going two for four. That's when you're going two for four and your average drops. <laughs> that's yeah. That's getting it done. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> Snead trying to close it out. Just misses up and away. Guys are walking off the dugout with hanging his head. And he's like, man, my average fell today because <laughs> he got two hits. Right. Jordan hanging tough. We'll see another pitch. <laughs> Little chopper. Foul will do it again. Two teams back at it tomorrow. We'll be with them. Three o'clock Eastern time. A rubber match between the Vols and the Dogs. Popped up out of play. Two o'clock start. Good thing. Good thing they just told me two o'clock because I just showed up at three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the broadcast would have sounded as well without you. Or not, don't think. I know it wouldn't have. There are some out there might, that might disagree with you. <laughs> but that's why I've turned off my Twitter notification. Another one into the dugout. Everybody's scrambling. So now it's full three and two. See if Snead rares back and throws another 101. He does, and it's sharply hit in the left center. That one came in at 99 miles an hour. Like I said, Dave, 99, it, it just, it really doesn't, shows you how hard you, it doesn't matter, right? 99 down the middle, he's right on it, smokes a rocket to center field. You know, everybody wants to throw hard, wants to throw hard. It's good to throw hard, but you got to be able to throw the ball where you want. Tates, he looks at a first pitch strike. And that's your ball. 